In this scene, the player makes two mistakes. She not only kicks the ball twice in a row, but she also kicks it through in the wrong direction. Let's begin. Let's begin. To pass each wicket in order, you must go through a wicket in the proper direction before progressing to the next wicket. Since this team's ball strikes their opponent's ball, they earn a second turn. However, because the balls are farther than two fists apart, they are not allowed to roquet their opponent's ball. Notice how they also show good team collaboration as well as proper turn taking. This team's ball did not hit their opponent's ball or an orange stake. Therefore, they do not earn a second hit. This means that their second kick was taken out of turn. In extreme croquet, there are a few different ways to hit the ball. But no matter what, you cannot ever pick up the ball. You may use your hands, which are often more accurate, but you cannot have prolonged contact with the ball. Contact should be direct and last less than one second. You can even use your head if you'd like. It's important to note that it's not always about strength, but strategy plays a key role as well. When kicking the ball, remember the wickets are not invincible. However, they are resilient. If a wicket is knocked over, it will be corrected before play continues. Scoring is quite simple. For completing the full course, a team receives one point. Each team will then also receive additional points based on its position at the conclusion of the game. First place is awarded five additional points, second place four points, third place three points, and so on. If no one is able to finish the game, whoever has passed the furthest wicket is in first place, and then the teams are awarded points based on position, as mentioned before. If a tie occurs, both teams will receive points associated with their lower position. For example, if there is a tie for second, both teams receive three points each, rather than the four points typically awarded to the second place team.